So I want to say, I'll start off with a good evening if you're watching this. I wanted to make a video because, um, you know, as I'm doing some video production classes, Cinema 124, and contemplating some other classes I wanted to take, uh, but I'm thinking of really making these videos because I care about movies. And, um, you know, lately you've seen up in my, my trashy bed, and lately you've seen a lot of videos that are basically like woke or Marvel. Well, there is one movie in particular called Origins, or Origin, actually, just came out. And this is a based on a true story about a, a writer. Uh, and I'm more than a bit, but it's based on a true story. And as you can tell, ever since last year, um, you know, Gran Turismo, based on a true story, was good. This year, it was it was uh, Alan Claw, a few other notable good films. Um that are based on true stories. These movies, more or less, they have you know factual evidence to back them up. So they're basically just building a story on a, on a real life scenario. And that's 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 great because um you know it beats superhero movies any time right now. So what is this movie about? Uh, well. Once I share my screen, you'll see, um, I'm, I'm browsing the web right now, doing different things. This movie, Origins, um, Origin, actually, it's funny, uh, I forgot to sign in to IMDb. This is a new, I, I mean, I'm still signing into some things, actually, because I, I, I this computer is there for to see, Asus, ROG, Ally, anyway, Origins, and you may know this fellow right here. Uh, his name, his name is John uh, Bonthor. He played the Punisher, and, you know, the, the Netflix Punisher. And he plays Brett Hamilton, who is the love interest of Isabel Wick Wickerson. And Wickerson is played by, well, this woman, uh, Anna June Ellis Taylor. And she's um, the author uh, of, a, of a well-known book. And I, I don't quite know the book if I if I look it up real quickly Isabel Wicker Wickerson. So Isabel Wickerson we're just gonna Wikipedia. I know this is not a reliable source but everybody uses it. Um minimize myself, make myself smaller. She is an American journalist. This is a picture of her from two thousand ten uh Texas Book Festival. Uh, she is the author of The Warmth of Other Sons, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration, and Cast the Origins of Our Descendants, which this is pretty much what the movie Origins is is based on, this book right here. Um, she is the first woman of African American heritage to win a Pul Pulitzer Prize in journalism. People, you've had other African Americans that won Pulitzer Prize, but in journalism. And, uh... The epic story of it was America's Great Migration. The Great Migration being the 1960s. So, um, she basically tells us how to heal. She, she interviewed over a thousand people for the warmth of other sons, which documents the strikes, the stories of American African Americans who migrated to northern and western cities during the 20th century. Her book, Cast, Describes the racial hierarchy in the United States as a caste system. Other books were bestsellers. And a caste system is a mixed social group in which an individual is born within a particular system of social stratification. A caste system. Within such a system, individuals are expected to marry exclusively within the same caste. In endogamy, follow lifestyles often linked to a particular occupation, hold a ritual status. Uh interact with others based on cultural notions of exclusion which uh, I gotta move myself out of the way here exclusion being a social exclusion some of the advantage of regulation of central terms have been but anyway, with the Sultan uh, observed within the Hawker and uh, okay, with Sultan caste considered as either more pure or more polluted than others. Basically, what it's saying is it's not just racism. Racism is like a small little piece of a big umbrella, and you can probably see my umbrella in the background. I got it drying, so um, 
that's that's what that is. You know, I know it's weird, but it has a type of decoration. And basically, what this author Isabel Wilkerson had discovered amongst her interviews and her you know investigation, her you know research, was that there's a lot of good stories. You know, involving the Nazis, involving Hitler's regime during the Third Reich, you know, in a World War Two events, involving even dec you know, centuries before that, um, and you know, it's not just really uh, race against race; it's within races. Um, and, and if you and if you look at the movie Mean Girls and you compare white you know, all the white women, you have three white women who are considered the top of the food chain, as, as, as in the bold we take, uh, Mean Girls, you know, it's a we take, uh, cinema, it's the cinema experience of the musical that just came out, like, a few years ago. So, not just came out, but came out a few years ago, and, um, you know, you got three girls who are, like, the top of the food chain amongst the students. Everybody knows and hates them, loves them and hates them. And then this new girl comes in and, you know, she challenges the idea. She's smart. She joins the group. Eventually she becomes the kind of the new leader or the new popular girl, therefore outcasting the other main girl. And that just means that, um, you know, because she had to wear a jumpsuit and she was, she was allowed she was allowed to sit, but they were all white. So they don't have to be of different races. They can be individuals of the same race, and what I say those three girls is they were the top most popular, but there was only, there was one at the very, very top of that three-person pyramid, that triad, that was dominant over everybody, and, and the other two girls had to listen to her, and if the other two girls did, then that third girl had to listen to her, so they had to listen to their leader, and this, this animalistic, you know, atop the food chain, this, you know, the animal ch kingdom, that they, as they described in Mean Girls, um, you know, year 2024, one just came out, uh, like, about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, actually. It, it, it describes, on a small scale, what a caste system is, based off what, uh, Wickerson had discovered. Because, um, it, she talks about racial hierarchy, but it starts out as a hierarchy within one particular uh, race or ethnic group or a cultural group. It's not really, it, is, it doesn't even go to races, it just goes to a certain uh, a group. Um, if you look at Africans, there was those that were leaders and those that were like scientists and scholars and those that were considered outcasts, you know, based off, you know, like things like uh, mental capability, skills, physical powers, 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 uh, you know, what they contributed, and what this, you know, what this Wilkerson, what this woman Ick Wilkerson discovered was, um, when it comes to like romantic relationships, certain w relationships were planned, uh, orchestrated to maintain the race to make sure you have strong offspring. And this is kind of like breeding animals in a way. You know, you breed strong animals with good genes in order to make, you know, an offspring with good genes. And uh, so you won't have any uh, uh, decedents or defects, as you'd say. And this is in human behavior as well. And really, um, it's quite phenomenal. This actually leads to racism. First, it led to slavery of Africans. Then it led to racism. Um, but those are just two, two, uh, two bullet points in 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 the big. Uh, essay uh, that, you, that, you, that you would expect her to write or anybody that write on the uh, the caste system, uh, and I, if you're really more interested, I guess you know check this book out. You know, um, it's a non-fictional book. She's based on research by Random House. But anyway, back to the movie. So the movie it stars Taylor as Wickerson, and you know you've got. Nancy Nash plays her cousin Mil Maria or Million, um, and you know she's kind of like supporting her cousin or sister. I think it's her sister. Um, she marries this guy, so she marries. So Wickerson marries a white guy, Brett Hamilton, played by John Bonthor, um, who played the Punisher. Once again, I mentioned that. And the movie kind of starts out with this. The Wickerson is not have it, she has only written like one book, so she's doing other things. But she's commissioned or requested by Amari Selvin, played by Blair Underwood. And he, what happens is at the very beginning, a model, a certain model, takes place. Um, 
and well there you go Trayvon Martin and that's funny because this guy who he was a he was an African-American boy was killed before George Floyd um, Trayvon Martin um, yeah may he rest in peace he he had a brutal execution um, because apparently it wasn't a white man that killed him it was the death it, it, he was killed by an Hispanic man a Latino in a white neighborhood and you know that story the Latino man was claiming self-defense but how is it self-defense if you go after the individual and you follow the individual in the truck and, and for some reason that didn't click with me and it didn't click with me until I actually saw the name in the credits thank God for I, IMDB um, thank you Lord, thank you but yeah so it's, now it makes sense because of Trayvon, about Trayvon Martin. Uh, and that makes this movie more... Actually, I want to go see it a second time now. So, yeah, um, the man that killed Trayvon Martin, he, you know, he claimed it was self-defense, but people were like, Why, how can it be self-defense if you follow him in a truck? You follow the guy. On, when he was he was walking on foot, and you was in a truck. You were in a truck. So, And I remember reading that, and I was thinking, if you're in a truck and following somebody who's on foot, that does not look like self-defense. That's... That's a plot to commit murder, and yeah, we even see this man, this woman, Stephanie Marsh, who played in the Law and Order Criminal Intent series as well as SVU series. She was a prosecutor. She plays Bicky. You know, and that's it's getting hot in here. Uh, Nick Offerman Off plays a plumber named Dave. Uh, oh, Valma from Flaminga plays Kate. You know, for from for uh, she's from Bates Motel. She's from uh, uh, Godzilla, King of Monsters. She's also from the uh, Conjuring series. Uh, her daughter's also in the Nun series, Nun 1 and 2. But anyway, moving on. So, Miles Frost plays Trayvon Martin, who, you know, this was this was kind of like the whole movement. It was like a, 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 a Civil War movement. I don't know, not, not like a Civil War, but a mini Civil not Not a mini, but kind of like a... You know, it was the 1960s, but a lot of people went 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 behind. A lot of you know the African American community, the African American community, you know they 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 made themselves known after Trayvon Martin as well as George Floyd. But Trayvon Martin in particular was very very um, heartfelt in America and the West of the world because this this young African American that was like a minor, I think it was like seven six fifteen to seventeen years old at the time, died. Un unnecessarily and now the story was being covered by um by the by wickerson and played by taylor <clears throat> and in the movie she gets emotional but she keeps herself very very uh professional she doesn't just scream at people and yell and get all emotional you know like you see black women doing she actually contains herself because she's trying to do research gain evidence to write a book and to make her voice hold about this matter but he he's what you say maybe the catalyst or the spark that sparks this research and and she's not even like she doesn't even want to do it at first she's, she's sought out by by uh Mr. Selvin here played by Blair Underwood and she still has doubts about it but then you know she listens to the tape and she imagines the death and you see kind of like this background story of Trayvon Martin being killed by this Latino man in a white neighborhood um and she starts to feel pacing back and forth and she's troubled so she's like you know what I'll take the story you know, I'll take the case, so to speak. So she starts investigating. She starts interviewing people. She starts finding things, figuring things out, uh, uh, establishing patterns, and she meets people. And she goes to different countries. By my, mind you, she, she goes to different countries, and she gets different opinions. You know, different facts. And one of the most important facts that she gains is that um, while you have the whole aspect of slavery in America, during the, uh, sorry, the discrimination in America in the 1930s and 40s and even 50s, at the same time you had the same thing in Germany with the, with the Germans uh, disliking and killing the Jews. They even have this whole plot, they even have this whole plot in the movie you see that the Germans were planning to make the Jews look like they were bad people by blaming the 
the the whole uh, um, they blamed the uh, Germany's losing World War One, World War One, not two, but one, on the Jews. If you if you learn from your history, and, and so they blamed on the Jews, and they wanted the Jews to be blamed because if they look bad like that, then all of Germany will hate the Jews and want to kill off the Jews. They you know they burn the books, they destroy the property, they they shave their heads, they make them smaller, they they put them in this. This detrimental caste, so it's like the outcast, the, you know. And despite the money that they had, despite how wealthy they are, despite how financially fluent they were, well, you know, they they had money. Money didn't matter, and it's kind of kind of reminds me of Killers of the Flower Moon, when you had all these uh, uh, American Indians with money in the Osage, uh, uh, Osage tribe. Because um, they found some oil and they sold it to wealthy white people who needed the oil for the automobiles and the trains and the boats, and they and the, and the Native American Indians, the Osage, got got rich off of it, fairly wealthy, or at least fairly wealthy. But then you know, so and so found out, and you should you know look up the name. He found out how to uh, um, uh, basically plot against the Osage and have the the people who had the head whites, uh, killers of, uh, in order to, in order to, you know, they, they married, the, they married the Native American Indians, and then the, those husbands or wives would kill the other spouse that had the head whites to the money, so that they would get the money, because if, like, for example, if she dies, he gets the money, eventually, but they have to wipe out every other immediate family member of a bloodline, including her mother, her dad was already dead, uh, her, her sister, two sisters. So she loses two sisters, a daughter, and a mother, all women, and she's the only one remaining in that movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, another great movie from last year, this past year. But uh, basically, Robert De Niro played William Hale, and Hale was the one that was responsible for orchestrating the death of certain Osage members, Native American Indians, because he wanted to basically wipe them out to the point where they can get the headwise and therefore get the money. And that is an example of a waste to another waste of, you know, of caste system, you know. But it's not like this entirely. Um, the Jews pretty much were, you know, they they already had issues with the, you know, you know uh, Egyptians. You know, and, and Egyptians were Africans. Egypt is in Eastern Africa, so the Africans were, I put the... Jews, back then they were known as Hebrews, and this is in Exodus, the second book of the Bible, or the Old Testament of the Bible, of the Holy Bible, and what, the, um, you know, uh, Moses, you know, the story of Moses, and what happens is, basically, they're enslaved, the Jews are enslaved, uh, and when, since the Hebrews are enslaved, they're the ones who build, build the pyramids of Giza, the, the Egyptians really didn't do it, it was the Jews that did it, but the Africans essentially enslaved the Jews. And um, this was an example of caste system. And, and it's not about ways, it's about finding out who is more inferior to you. To, to deciding who's inferior and who's superior. And they, they talk about this. Anyway, um, so I, I, you should really watch the movie in order to understand exactly how this caste system works. Or at least do research and then go see the movie. But I just wanted to share with you some some you know things. This is from CNN. And this is, these two seem the same. So if you look at like, you know... This is, it starts from, you know, Yahoo News, and it links you to CNN, but... Opinion. Origin brilliantly exposes America's caste system. Here's how we tear it down. And I'm not going to read through it, but... Um, in a week when the presidential candidate told us, uh, the U.S. is not a racist country, and his rival, we've never been a racist country, the release of the, of the movie could not be more timely. So basically, with this whole campaign, whatever it's saying, this the release of this movie is just perfect with this statement, with with what's going on now. Uh, written and directed by an exceptionally talented, blah blah blah. The, the, I'm sorry, Ava DuVernay, Ava DuVernay, a masterful adapt adaptation of Isabel Wilkerson's best-selling book, Cast the Origins of Our Descendants, unflinchingly demonstrates that the U.S. is indeed a racist country, and has been since its very inception. After underpinning that racism is what Wilkerson refers to as a caste system so effective at preserving the domination of white people over everyone else, because white people are the dominant, and everybody who's not white is considered a minority. That is, blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, Asians, 
uh, biracial people like me, multiracial people like me. Uh, I just said that. What was I? Uh, that that the Nazis were inspired by it. Cast Wilkerson says is the system that creates subject, su subjugation. So basically, there's this whole thing in, in, in that the Nazis are having a meeting in Germany, and they 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 receive, you know, all this news from Amer uh, from America that America has incorporated a caste system where they've made the whites superior to the blacks, and they said we could do something similar to that with the Jews. So basically, what happens in America inspires the whole. Nazi killing Jews movement in Germany in the 1940s and 50s. And so, let me take a drink of Pepsi. What Wilkerson refers to in her book as the false god of race was invented by slave owning European colonists as a convenient way of identifying at a glance who belonged to which caste and who belonged to whom. That's interesting. You know, back to you know the the slave traders and stuff. They went to buy slaves, and so they had to identify well who's built, who can work harder, who's stronger, who can run faster. They categorized and organized, grouped them, and it shows the people being being put on slave boats and uh, some dying and some being so cramped that they didn't have any room. They barely had enough room to breathe. You know, back then, you know, the Mayflower was one of them, I think. A lot of the sl some of the, some of the slaves were able to jump off of the boat and they died at sea, but they'd rather do that than die in some as someone's property, because the harsh environment that they were in on the boat would just be the begin would be just the beginning of the harshness that they would ex experience for like the next 300 years. Probably got that wrong, but uh, the or the movie Origins, for which opened well, at least Friday, will leave no American viewer in any doubt that they were still living under a system d designed entirely for the manufacturing, justification, codif codification, and, pu and perpetration of hate based on skin color. Movies like this have a crucial role to play in keeping America's Americans confront, helping Americans confront the history. But we need to do more than learn about and honor the dead. We need to liberate the very, the living and their descendants, which is true. A boldly choosing to turn a non-fiction book into a biographical drama, it focuses on the writer's journey. So it's not just about people getting emotional about it. It's not just about strikes and holding signs. This is before. I mean, this is not about that. This is about one writer in particular, whole, whole endeavor in interviewing people in different countries. She said have over, she had over a thousand, over one thousand interviews. She is basically going around the entire globe. Don't know what our countries, um, but she goes to Germany. She goes to another. She goes like to India. She even goes to India, and she finds there's a man in particular, a doctor in particular, that figures out a caste system. He, he researches the caste system in his own country, India, and discovers that that is very, very similar, about the same as the one in America when it comes to the whites and blacks, uh, the Caucasians and African Americans. So we follow the Wilkerson's travel as she dissects caste, comparing and connecting its devastating impact on those it places at the bottom of the, of the social hierarchy. The dialects previously known as untouchables in India Jews in Nazi Germany and black people in the U.S. And so these untouchables in, in India, basically they were people that they had to put on oil and the only thing they had was oil and themselves to keep them safe. Keep them safe from what? Well, they were basically responsible for cleaning out the toilets in India. When, you know, you know, in people's feces, that's the shit. Uh, and they had to keep the pipes clean to keep them from clogging, so that so the sept so the systems those septic those septic systems wouldn't be backed up. And these people, only some people were chosen, and they did this for as 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 a incentive as as a reward, so to speak. They got rations of food. They didn't get like good good food. They got rations of food, basically leftovers, I, I think. And um, yeah, so you can, I will include this link in the article here. Uh, go ahead and get my OneNote started. 
I, I should have set up before I, I, I did it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's like, it's getting late, and, uh, I just, I just kind of, I just want to, you can fast forward to what's going to be next, because it's going to take me a little bit of time, sure, I look to, look forward to seeing other reviews, anyway, um, I'm going to pin this, so the whole the whole idea is that it talks about the cast system and the brilliant a brilliant cast, by the way. Yeah, do you see what I just did though? One's one when it's with the E, when it's with the without. When it's with the E, when it's without. Yeah. So yes, once again, written and directed directed by Ava Duvone Duvenay. Uh oh, enough called writing credits goes to Isabel Wickerson. You know, because she's the inspiration for the character played by Andrew Nay Ellis Taylor. Um, there's a book again, the origins of our dis uh, discontents. The origins of our discontents. Hmm. I don't know what that means? Lack of contentment, dissatisfaction in one's circumstances. The origins of how we feel. Our negativity. Our Frustration, unhappiness. A person who is dissatisfied typically with the prevailing social and political situation. The cause attractive. Yep. That's pretty much us, Americans. So anyway, uh Yep, that's those those that. And so so the character she loses some notable people. Uh, Wilkerson loses, first she loses her husband, uh, Brett Hamilton. I believe he's her husband. It never really shows his death. Like, it shows him lying down on the floor, but it never, I don't, I don't think it does anyway. I have to watch it. I will watch it a second time. It doesn't show what cause, what his cause of death was. Um... But it's very interesting because, you know, he marries a black woman and, uh, or he's with a black woman. And, you know, there's this, there's this joke about, about her mom, by, uh, Wilkerson's mom that, uh, I believe, she, uh, Ruby, Ruby Wilkerson, played by Emily Yancey. She pretty much says that, you know, that boy, meaning Trayvon Martin, he should have, should not have looked that white man in the eye. She should have just, he should have just kept his head down. Um, and they, and, and everybody else in the room disliked what she said. They didn't like hearing that. Especially uh, Wickerson and her sister Marion. But what happened was, is her mother was saying, based on her own experience, she should have just, you know, been submissive because that's how you stay alive as an African American, as, as a as a black woman, as a black person. That's how you stay alive. But uh, and this this actor, this you know, he 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 should get more kudos for this. Um, I really now that I know that he played Trayvon Martin. I, I gotta try my best to get this movie known because I, I keep looking at at, at uh, the seating, like AMC theaters, as I get the ticket, and it's like, honestly, it's like, uh, and I got a ticket for Cowboy Bebop in like at two thirty, so I gotta get some sleep. I got the I got the show and and, and out of pen, but uh, um, get tickets. I'm gonna get tickets. And while I'm at it, I'm going to duplicate this tab. Go ahead and pin this for a particular reason. Uh, let's see. So I I'm just going to show Metreon 16. I I'm going to show, I'm going to go Sunday. And I'm going to show two different theaters. Go back and forth. There's origins, and I'm just go ahead and open each and every one of these. And this is at Kabuki 8, and this is on Sunday the 21st, in a few hours from now. And I'm gonna go ahead and minimize myself here. 
hide this as you probably know what that is that's just the seating information the seating chart this is pretty much one o'clock four fifteen seven fifteen there's only two people right now and nobody at, at nine forty and this is tomorrow and so I could be by myself then if I see the Kabuki eight and so uh anyway there's not there's barely any seats taken so this movie is not really known right now and okay so oh yawn go back to the stuff first so here let's let's do times of symbol and this is at metro yawn 16 the second uh the second the perhaps the first amc theater in San Francisco. The second one is Kabuki 8. So there's only two in San Francisco. The other one is in Oakland. So, 1 o'clock. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, once again, not that many people. Let me do that again. Hide this. Not that many people. And I understand the time because some people, like, you know, got, like, you know, church and stuff like that or whatever. If there's only four people at 7.30. Ain't that something? Nobody at 9.20. Now, I don't expect people at 9.20 because it's not that big of a movie. But you'd think there'd be, like, at least... 15 seats. I mean, if not at 7.30, then maybe, I don't know, like 10, 12, maybe 13. Uh, let's see, what time do I have Cowboy Bebop? I got 2.30, right? So it's going to end about maybe 4.30. I'm going to get me a, I'm going to go ahead and get a ticket. Can't do it at 1. Can't do it at 4.15. I'm gonna go ahead and do it for 7:30, I believe. Maybe I'll do it for 9:20. And you can always fast forward this if you want. Um, at least how much would it be without it? And I'll uh, share without it. Okay. I'm gonna pin this tab. So 920. I highly encourage people to go see this movie. Um, let's see. Let's see. It's, 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 I'm saving myself. 1849. Th this movie is at least, it's, 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 it's good for at least one, at the very least, one showing. I don't understand it. You know, so it's weird. It's weird. But I'll, buy, I'll buy my food later. Uh, what do they have? I don't think I got popcorn. Oh my god, these slides are really good. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's go ahead. Let's not get too sidetracked, mind you. Make sure my mic is on. Save myself 1849. That's, that's your AMC Stubbs A-list savings right there. That's what I have. A-list. Go ahead and purchase that. Let that process. And I just got to make sure that I'm showing my stuff here. Sharing my screen. Hope I'm not showing any private information. I don't really care about the offers unless they got something specific. Go ahead and add it to my calendar. Google Calendar. I use Google Calendar since I have an Android phone. I'm not trying to show off my business, but. Okay. Fresh this, and the next one is like nine to nine forty. I kind of want to go to Kabuki Eight though. I wonder what those times for. We we'll check those. I really love this PC, this computer. It's fast. I'm thinking about going to actually Kabuki Eight and eating in in, in Japan Town in San Francisco. I love San Francisco, and I love I love Japan Town. That's why it's Chinatown. But I can I like to eat though. Salmon, teriyaki at one of the restaurants, and then go see a movie. So I can go see Cowboy Bebop, then go to Japantown, eat. Then, while well, I'm in Japantown, see a movie at 7.15 at Kabuki 8. Or perhaps even 9.40. I might change my ticket, I don't know. Anyway, so this this movie is is a, it's, it's quite amazing, actually. Um, And I'm trying to remember as much as possible what will happen, because 
um, pardon me as I go through all these things here uh, that you know Microsoft just has. Um, as I as I go as I go, what happens? You know, and I'm just going to talk to more about the story, about 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 you know, seeing the story as they basically write this review. It's not what we get when we see a successful black female intellectual as the main character in a movie. So, yada yada yada. Yeah, I'm gonna clearly linking this, and I'm gonna do Yahoo's actually. Uh, Yahoo is you know because I found it via Yahoo. So let me do it like this. Go ahead and do it like that. Okay. Boldly choosing to tone Wickerson's non-fiction book into a bi bi biographical drama, Devone focuses on the writer's journey. Struggling to cope with the personal tragedy, Wickerson is horrified by the audio of the 19... of, of 911 9, call, not 911, but 911 call, that recorded Trayvon Martin's killing, and feels compelled to investigate what lies beneath racism. So basically what happened was, was this, the, the person who killed Trayvon Martin, um, he called the, he called 911 and pretended that this guy was, um, up to something, and he's following him around, so he gives him description, he gives a description of him, uh, and since he shows a description of him, he basically he tells he tells a description of him, and he makes it seem like he's innocent, like he's basically just keeping an eye on the individual and seeing what's happening, and and, and basically talking about. Um, I gotta I gotta fix this. Talk talking about like this individual is about to cause some trouble. It looks like, and uh, he's reporting it to. Uh, to the police, you know, acting like he's innocent, um, so it's like a, a white man doing neighborhood watch duties against a black man, a black boy, by the way, um, and, but he actually goes up to him and shoots Trayvon, and then, and then a woman hears it, and she, like, she sees, she sees, you know, you hear gunshots, and she reports the, the model, and that's when it goes widespread, and I, and I think that this one Wilkerson is responsible for even for for spread widespread in the story even more. I mean, you know, um, so so anyway, let's continue. Uh, allowing Cole to be the film's heroine helps advance the the the, the, the movie's narrative, drawing hard hitting depictions of key historical moments in present day encounters. Duvernay faithfully tells Wilkerson's story while the author on screen character while the author's on screen character portrayed by Andrew Andrew Ellis Taylor, I gotta learn how to pronounce names, relates the story of our country's faulty foundations. So basically they it's, it's kinda like an essay. Movies are like visual essays. They compare what happened in the past with what's going on now. It all starts with this coin in by the film now, in the film's narrative, what is going on in current events and how that relates to past events such as the um the what happened to the Jews in Germany, uh, what's going on in India uh, so many centuries ago, what happened with uh, the slaves on the boat. Those are at least three good historical moments. Even more so there's more historical moments involving Different characters, there's like, I think a total of three or four of them, and it all starts with this man, he plays a character named Allison Davis, and he's played by Asher Baker, and then you have Elizabeth Davis, I think that's either his sister or his wife, played by Jasmine Sivas Jones, and I will show you a picture of them real quick, and, and these two, what these two do, is they essentially... Essentially, they, uh, along with these two, August Landmesser, played by Finn Whitwalk, and Alma Ikler, played by Victoria Petrini. These two couples, um, actually, they don't, they don't, it's not them two, it's another two, it's, um, another, n another white couple. They, the four of them investigate the incidents in Germany, as well as other things, and they write about it. And, in a way, Wickerson is walking with them, even though, you know, one group is dead, and she's alive, and it's like a time gap, obviously. She's walking with the individuals, and she's using what they've already found, and comparing it with everybody else, including what the doctor found. And the doctor, um... 
Man, this is this is getting a little bit. Anyway, uh, you just have to watch the movie for yourself. I mean, I can't. I, I really. I, I can't quite see the pictures. Maybe if I. Doctor. Is this him? Maybe. I have to see the picture to make sure. So this guy plays one of the characters, a key character, as well as. Okay, it's not going to show that person. This is also one of the key characters. I just want to show their faces so you can get familiar with them. I bet it'll close out some of these tabs. We have to get the Erex back in the book before the hourglass runs out. Or I become one of them. Freeze forever on the page. Look, I'm sorry, but that's insane. And that can't happen. Everything that's happening now is insane and can't happen. Let's begin, right. shall we? This is Apple TV Plus, the streaming service with something for everyone. Thank Let's you. Bow way show. New releases every Bow week. The best movie. As well as he, I think he's my bow. I think he's Bow way show too, or Motel way show anyway. Um, they're basically two light skinned. Uh, um, I'm not gonna say African Americans because I don't know if the characters themselves are African Americans, but basically they live amongst uh, you know, black black people and then of course light skinned black people or or colored individuals, light skinned colored colored light skinned colored individuals are treated differently uh about whites and blacks. Um you know, we're not really seen especially a long time ago as fully black, so therefore we seen as either better than blacks but not so good as whites, like white in between. We get some of the benefits of whites but we don't get all of it. But we get more than black people would. Historically, anyway, um, and so that's also from my experience. So, so I'll take it personally as well because there's also mixed characters or mixed-looking characters in this film. So I, there's a personal stake in it for me. Um, so if you're biracial and you happen to like the fact that there's biracial people in movies now, such as the film Gran Turismo, based on your story, there's another inspiration for you. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, he plays a character, a key character, and and. We're trying to close out some of these apps because uh, a lot of this is so that so this doctor he you know he he finds out um, about the about the, in India and well we're gonna see what's about them all. Uh, how would I rate this movie? It's I, I'm probably gonna give it like at least a seven point five right now, if not an eight. I want to watch it a second time to give it more of a fail review, a fail evaluation because quite frankly it's it was really good the first time and you know it's two and a half hours not too long and it's based on a true story it's based on a writer's research and what she did to basically not, not you know she the beginning of all this is currently is Trayvon Martin and to relate what happened to him to all the other issues like Nazis and slavery and and some thing in India, and you wouldn't expect that in India, you know? Uh, as well as other countries, this caste system is developed in other countries, perhaps every other country, in faith, religion, um, ethnicity, and culture that we just don't know about. So, there's more behind the scenes, there's more than, to meet the eye than just racism. If you don't know really what that means, it's like, basically race is based on your physical skin deep characteristics or attributes and that ladies and gentlemen is basically the very shallow way of looking at it you have to look deeper into behavior which defines culture and language which together along with customs and ex other, 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 other methods of expression including art that's music theater pictorial art whatever what have you those types of expression go into human behavior, which creates culture and ethnicity, and that is a much broader category 
than just merely weight than waste. And so, if you look at it from that perspective, that ethnic versus waste perspective, that ethnic group, ethnicity versus waste perspective, you will find out exactly what a caste system is. Or you can look at the film that came out two weeks ago, titled Mean Girls.